next one. Smooth, a smooth two kilogram collar is attached to a spring. Spring has a stiffness of three newtons per meter, has an unstretched length of 0.75. The collar is released from rest at A, determine the acceleration and the normal force of the rod on the collar at the instant Y is equal to one. Okay, a lot of information. Let's clarify, let's make sure you understand. There's only one spring here. Sometimes these figures will kind of show you where it's starting and show you where it's ending. Uh, there's only one spring connected to one collar. Let's draw the free body diagram of the collar, right? We, we draw free body diagrams of things that have mass, right? And so I'm drawing the free body diagram of that collar C. All right, what forces are acting on the collar? Uh, the weight, 2 times 9.81. Um, and the force in the spring. Now, if I was up here, I would draw the force in the spring perfectly horizontal. Uh, if I'm down here, I would draw the force in the spring right there. Try to draw your free body diagrams as if they would be true at, at any location. Okay, so I'm going to draw this force in the spring. And I'm, right now, I'm just going to say at some angle theta. So maybe theta starts at zero, maybe theta ends at some other angle. Try to draw things, try to draw your free body diagram as if it would be true everywhere. The, the one before this, the problem before this, we actually did that because nothing is changing on that block that's going up the incline. N is still that direction, force friction is still that direction. Where friction is still mu k in. Uh, so anyway, try to be careful with your free body diagrams and don't don't plug in that theta too soon because it's changing. Uh, okay, what else? There's one more force here. The normal force, yeah, of the rod on the collar. Uh, technically, it could either be pointed left or right. Right. If you have a collar that is or constrained to move along the rod, then the rod has a normal force either perfectly left or right, perpendicular to the rod. Remember, it has reaction forces that restrict the movement. This is restricting movement left or right. So here, uh, I think we can see, it's, it's keep pulling it to the left because the spring is trying to pull it to the right. Um, that one right here, if I got a negative, that's okay. That just means, oh, it was trying, the, the rod was keeping it from going the other direction. All right. So that normal force, you just got to choose the left or right. If your answer comes out negative, it, it was the other way. All right. I think that's a good free body diagram. Let's define our axes. It's accelerating straight up and down. So I'll stick with my straight, usual horizontal and vertical axes. All right. So now let me sum the forces in the x direction. Force in the spring, uh, cosine theta minus n equals ma, acceleration in the x. Is this collar accelerating in the x? A question, Jay? Yeah, oh, yeah, define your axes. Always define your axes. Always draw your axes. In fact, uh, Dr. Um, Gross used to teach this. He had, he was uh, particular about his axes, uh, and he gave me a stamp. He has a stamp that says axes, and he would stamp your homework if you forgot to uh, label your axes. I should do that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, define your axes. I will probably assume if you don't draw them, I probably assume. But if you're in my, stat my statics class, I gave a point for drawing your axes on a free body diagram. I may, I may do that in dynamics too. Draw, yes, draw your axes, label your axes. Okay, all right, summing the forces in the X, what is the acceleration in the X? Yes, yes, it's zero. Um, and now let's sum the forces in the Y. Uh, negative, this two times 9.81, uh, positive FS uh, sine theta equals m times acceleration in the y. Okay, so what I like to do when things are changing, I like to wait to plug in. So I could find the force in the spring 
at the end point. Um, I could find theta at, the, at this end point that I'm interested in, um, but I'll caution you not to plug in things too soon. Uh, many times it's very helpful to write an equation for acceleration. Take that, equal, take that equation that acceleration is in, rearrange it and get yourself an equation for acceleration because then y'all then we can if we have an equation for acceleration then we can take integrals then we can do do things with it so here the acceleration so i divide that two from both sides one half fs sine theta minus 9.81 one half fs sine theta minus 9.81 we could that's a pretty interesting equation uh, do you see that w when it's starting, theta is zero, its acceleration is 9.81 straight down, but as it keeps going, you'll see that its acceleration is going to get smaller and smaller because the spring is pushing it up. It's, it's an interesting equation, but anyway, if the question asked for velocity, we won't talk about it right now, I would have to integrate that equation, right? Uh, don't worry about that for a minute. It, the, the question really just asks for the acceleration at this instant. So if you're lucky, you, if I just ask for the acceleration at that instant, then we can just plug in theta at that instant. What is theta at that instant? Well, at a point, or 0.75 and one, we could do tangent. It would be 53.1. And what is Fs? Let's take a second for this one. Fs, the force in the spring is K delta X. Three newtons per meter. What is delta X? Delta X is the amount of stretch or compression. Delta X is the amount of stretch or compression from its unstretched length, from its original length. Its unstretched length, it says in the problem statement, is 0.75. What is its current length? Its current length, that pink line, is a squared b squared equals c squared 1.25. All right, so at this instant, its current length is uh, 1.25, so the amount of stretch would be 0.5 meters. Make sure your units work out. I know I preach units, and I really don't keep up with them as much as I should. All right, 1.5 newtons is the force in the spring. All right, so the acceleration in Y, negative 9.21. Does it make sense that it's not accelerating as fast as a projectile, you know, as fast as gravity, because that spring is pushing it back up? And so if we plugged in 53.1, if we plugged in 1.5, uh, then we could find N is equal to 0.901 newtons. Is this constant? Is its acceleration 9.21 constant? Where did it come from? It came from this equation. Is this changing? Yeah, yeah. Is, is theta changing? Yeah. Uh, this one is not constant. So it, that's why I, I was kind of mentioning if this was to ask for velocity, we couldn't just take that 9.21 and you know find the time or the, we can't use those constant acceleration equations. Uh, we'd have to uh, integrate. Not too bad. Think about that. It, theta goes from zero to 53.1 degrees. That force in the spring is changing to, that's it's a really interesting problem. Maybe you'll think about that over the weekend.